me personally, coming off of one of the most successful seasons, not only as a running back, but as a college football player in general ever. As a team, we're looking to go all the way to sky's the limit. And we open up the season as number two in the nation against FCS Midwest. We got to show out, make a statement. We can dominate any and everybody, especially an inferior opponent. And I pick up my first touchdown of the season here on third and 10. When it comes to winning the conference, national championship, or even a Heisman, it's mine and ours to lose as a team. And we have no intentions of falling short of any of those goals. But when it comes to life in general, I've been winning. Everything has been going in my favor. And there's nothing in the world that I can want for, nor my family. The current state of college football is phenomenal. Very beneficial, not only for me, but my family. I've been able to put us in a position to win so early in my career. It's actually pretty crazy. And as far as NIL opportunities go, they're banging down the door from Nike to Chick-fil-A, KFC. I'm even in talks of getting my own alkaline water. A slew of fantastic things are falling in my favor and going well for me. But when it comes to good, it comes to bad, of course. Everything I do is for the people I love. Back at home in Cedar Hill, Texas, the ones who struggled with me when we didn't have it, my mom, siblings, and a few other family members, that's who I go so hard for. But when you're facing your name, it's plastered all over the country, all the major social media outlets, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, everything you can think of. A lot of people coming out of the woodworks, claiming they day ones, and they're not. Like, they've been here with me and my family throughout this entire journey. Some of these people I ain't spoke to in years. I'm getting random texts, phone calls, emails, every form of communication I've received at all. Some people ask for handouts, money, opportunity. Somebody even asked me for a car. And as much as I like to give and show love, I refuse to let everybody in the home. They didn't even help lay the foundation for. A great way to open the season. At home with the W, but not only that, it's a statement game. Putting the country on notice. I'm coming. Trying to get busy over here at ECU this week, and I don't even know if we can consider them little brothers to our school because they've been trash for a very long time. Taking the handoff here on first and 10. No lanes to cut this one back inside. Great blocks up front, but I got to carry this one out wide. Picking up the first down, and I get out of bounds. One of the things I hear the most around the country that people think makes me great is being able to catch the ball out of the backfield at an elite level. And as a running back, I know how important it is to be versatile, but nothing is more important or will ever outshine the ability to take a handoff and ride it up the field all the way into the end zone for an 80-yard touchdown. And being able to catch out of the backfield, have elite speed, great strength, elusiveness, and be able to read holes, everything. I feel like I'm a jack of all trades. From the jump, it seems like this play is dead. A bunch of ECU defenders unblocked, but as big as I am, I can be very slippery in traffic, getting through, picking up the first down. Now it's late in the third quarter, and at this point, we're just trying to ground and pound our way into the fourth, kill as much clock as possible. This game isn't a blowout everybody expected it to be. And now with only a six-point lead, coach told me straight up, it's all on me. Taking all the necessary handoffs, picking up these first downs, running out this clock. I gotta take us home. And as gas as I may feel, I love situations like this. Everything, the entire workload has been thrown on my back. For me, these are my Heisman moments. And to no one's surprise, player of the game honors are thrown my way. 35 carries, nearly 300 yards, the definition of a workhorse. Despite being 1-3, Notre Dame comes out here and strike first. At home against the number two team in the nation, they're trying to embarrass us and make us have a terrible first quarter. A lot of great blocks up front, but way more opportunity on the outside. I bounced this one out, run through a couple of guys. I stumbled somehow, regain my balance, and still managed to stay on my feet. We run one of my favorite plays in the entire playbook, the halfback screen, trying to outrun three defenders, then hurdle the fourth. I almost broke my neck on this play. And with just over a minute left, we walk our way into the end zone to pick up our first touchdown, tying this game up finally. That's probably the the worst first quarter we're gonna play all this season here in a second we gotta light it up come out here on fire up one score before the half trying to make it two now showing off the versatility picking up this first down through the air and with just over a minute left two timeouts and a great run open lane picking up the first and some we should have no problem getting to the end zone about 15 yards out 30 seconds on the clock bouncing this one to the outside great blocks diving my way in this drive ended in success a gutsy call here on fourth down but anytime i'm split out a big play is going to be made picking up this first down the defense is playing exceptional and offense Defensively, Notre Dame just can't keep up with the number two team in the nation. Even if we let up off the gas, I don't think they could come back or even put themselves back in this game if they wanted to. We finished today very, very light. 29 carries, over 200 on the ground, five receptions with two touchdowns. We balled out, did our thing. The team played tremendous. We got conference play this week against Virginia Tech in the rain, so you know what that means. More carries for your boy. We go with a run here on first down, trying to set up this block up front, and I peeked this lane to cut back towards the middle in a wide open gap just a little too late. We've made our way down to the four yard line and this spread look bust this play wide open we're currently three and zero, and it seems like we're not as explosive as an offense like we were last season this year even though all of our major players and weapons have returned we're not putting up as many points as we did last season this year within the first quarter or even the first half but our offense is so explosive to the point where a down year for us to score 21 to 28 points in a game it's our defense that's taking a step forward i mean last season we had to put up nearly 40 to 50 points a game just for our defense to give up another 25 to 30 in the fourth quarter 
quarter to any given team. So to see how far they've come and our offense is still on track to be one of the better offenses in the entire country and not just in the ACC is a pretty good sign. And then to think all the explosive weapons we have on the perimeter, then you got a back like myself who can take their ball and take control over a game at any given time like I have today is actually pretty insane. We can move it through the air on the ground. I can put the team on my back at a moment's notice with no problem. And when I say put the team on my back, that's exactly what I mean. 43 carries on a day. Name another back in the country that's doing that at an efficient level. Right now, everybody has me number one for the Heisman so far this season. The winner last year, Braylon Allen, he's on his way out the door. And right now, I'm not too focused on it. It's still early in the season. I just want to run off with the momentum. Swinging out, catching this one out of the backfield, and at this point, I'm set out to embarrass this Coastal Carolina defense and set the tone early in this game, picking up the first down, getting out of bounds, staying on my feet. And if we're within five, you might as well call it a guarantee. I hit the brakes and fall right over the goal line for the touchdown. With the way I'm utilizing this offense, you couldn't tell me I couldn't be a star-studded receiver making a great toe-tapping catch on the sideline. This defensive end thought he had a clear shot on me. Boy, the guard pulled at the perfect time. Great block up front, picking up the first. I almost took this one to the crib. When I went to the sideline, one of my teammates told me stop dancing so much. Go run through some i took his advice and i run straight through this dude's face picking up the first down big play instead of picking up the easy first down on 30 inches i smashed on the brakes cut this one back and turn a five yard run into a 16 and i'm not sure what it is especially with me being such an elite weapon out of the backfield anytime i swing out i'm always open free touchdown untouched dive in get dirty whenever i win that heisman trophy i'm gonna be sure to credit my offensive line and my acceptance speech the blocking up front is phenomenal a huge play that could have went to the crib easily they make it so easy to the point that walk in touchdowns like this, I gotta add a little something to them to make it fun for myself. And whenever we have a two score or more lead in the fourth quarter, you know what time it is. Hand the ball to that bell cow. Let me do what I do. Pick up those first downs and kill that clock. Taking this hand off to the right with a lead blocker, pulling off a little bit of Houdini action, spinning off of his back, getting us into the end zone. They didn't call a flag on his late hit. A typical day at the office, 30 carries, a buck 74 on the ground, four total touchdowns with nearly 80 yards receiving on the day, balled out in every way that I possibly could. Open the snap, first play from scrimmage of this game against UVA and the middle of the field is just looking way too sweet the safety got an angle but we all know you the fastest player in college football ain't nobody catching me to the crib for six after eclipsing over 700 receiving yards just in my freshman season bro they've been split me out wide a lot damn near every game multiple times a game every single week and I love it and when we're in this distance we all know what's going on easy walk in greatest offensive line of all time you heard me I called it here taking his hand off to the right and I'm selling it hard the second I see the safeties and these linebackers commit I'm cutting it backside of my blocks and i'm taking this one up the seam to the crib all the way down for six the halfback screen hasn't been working out in our favor too much as of lately but today second and six make the catch up the sideline all the way down just inside the five this was supposed to be a touchdown my ability to maintain balance through contact is insane getting skinny between a blocker and defender then maintaining my balance through contact before going to the ground crazy anytime i get a handoff going to the wide side of the field it just isn't fair i spin this corner right back into this block and at this point it's a foot race and we all know who gonna win that today is the most explosive first half we've had in the last two seasons hands down without a doubt we're going crazy against uva and granted virginia is 0-5 and, and they have yet to get a win our defense has played phenomenal holding them to one score through four quarters is tremendous player of the game 290 on the ground four touchdowns nearly 100 yards receiving we destroy uva that final score is sickening got their fan base in shambles i usually don't keep up with this but it was brought to my attention all ncaa offensive player of the week racking up these small awards throughout the season is always a plus back at home in some good weather against a solid georgia tech team and off rip that middle of the field is looking way too sweet a couple of good cuts a good read i'm off to the crib having the ability to take advantage of any little small crease hole or anything in the defense that allows me to take advantage of it is my god given gift and i love it but the things i do in this field i really can't explain it's all instinct i got a wide open hole in front of me but i know on this backside on the wide side of the field nothing but space and opportunity make a few guys look silly and i'm off to the crib for another touchdown one of the wildest of my career and at this point in the game everybody understands the memo hand me the ball i pick up these first downs we kill that clock we chew it up do what we do taking somewhat of a delayed handoff here on second and 13 this dn stumbles his way into the backfield but i hit him with a little something before he can get his hands on me looking to make a play as a receiver coming out of the backfield here on third and seven but instead drake's gonna connect with one of our big time weapons and kobe making a big time catch and play i always told my dog he was blessed to have a name like that if i could be named after a legend like kobe Bryant, bean man that'd be crazy 
crazy. We can't let out the gas just yet. Just under three minutes left here in this game. Only up 15. That can change really quick. Trying to seal this game up. This linebacker makes a huge mistake not playing me. Instead, he's trying to ball hawk. I make this catch and bears him run through a couple of more defenders falling just short of the touchdown. Our defense only giving up 10 points in the fourth quarter, but that being the most they've given up all season speaks volumes. They've really taken a huge leap this season. I might be tripping, but over half of our games we played so far this season have been in state. So many teams in North Carolina is kind of crazy, but there's no question who's the best out of the bunch. And for some reason, we're still undefeated, but we dropped from number two in the nation to number three. It seems like the people in charge of the polls are already trying to count us out for that national championship. But when I'm toting that rock like this, we ain't losing no games. Off to the crib, 75 yards out for the touchdown. And through my first season and a half being a Tar Heel, I set a new school record for the most rushing touchdowns in a career. I got so much history to make and so much that I've done already. A vertical running north and south type of play style is more of what I am. Seeking the contact to get those yards, but anytime I get to run east and west and get some extra yards, maybe break it outside and use my speed to get the edge, I'm going to do that every single time. It's one thing to break a school record, but to break two at home in front of that home crowd going crazy is insane. The most rushing yards in a career for a player in UNC history. And to put the cherry on top of an already phenomenal first quarter, taking his hand off insane blocks up front, clear as day, nothing but green grass and blue turf in front of me into that end zone. Seeing our offense improve and actually get the flow a little bit better going throughout the season is really exciting. Going throughout the rest of this schedule, we got some big time games coming up. And I would say last season, and even before I got here, this UNC offense was very pass heavy. But since I've arrived, we all know who this offense goes through. And being a dynamic back that I am, you really can't shut down the run game. Even if you tried, I can fly out the backfield, make catches, and pick up huge yardage like here I did on first and 10. And through the third quarter, I continue to let my versatility shine here on second and nine, picking up the first down and some. A remarkable game, breaking records. My offensive line has been tremendous this season. They celebrate and they hold this with me. I couldn't do it without them. In a remarkable record setting day, 25 carries, 273 yards on the ground, two touchdowns, and a light 36 yards receiving. Word just came through the wind. Back home in Cedar Hills, a bunch of people are putting bets on me to win the Heisman for us to win a national championship. And I get it. We the hottest team in college football currently. I'm the best player in college football by far. And I mean, who wouldn't bet on me or us? And if I didn't already have a mountain of pressure on my shoulders, that just made things worse. It's one thing for people around the country to place bets or whatever the case may be. But from people back home to do that, it's actually kind of wild. So I'm out here playing for my family, my own success. But then I got to play to make sure that people back home don't get screwed on their money. Because if I can't go back to the crib, where else can I go? And obviously, it's not my fault. I'm not the one placing the bets and telling people to place bets and put up their life savings or nothing on me or this team. But I mean, I got to come through. If prioritizing my play on the field, my health and everything surrounding that wasn't already important. Now it's literally at the top of my list. No relationships, no party and nothing outside of that is on my mind right now. And of course, when the pressure gets higher, my play decreases immediately. We only have one score on the board here towards the end of the third quarter. We got to step it up. I know everybody back at the crib right now is shaking in their boots. Could we take our first L of the season at home against a 4-4 four and four Pittsburgh team? Now we're here in the fourth quarter with the least amount of points we've had up until this point throughout any game so far this season, trying to step it up and put another one on the board. We got to seal this game up. They do hand the ball off to me to cap this game off, run out that clock. We do secure a very close dub, the scariest game we played all season believe it or not. Heading into the final stretch of the season, we bounced around between one and three all season, but now sitting at number two in the perfect spot to go to that natty, we got to finish out solid. On the road against the U in this first quarter has been an absolute disaster. But this second quarter, it's time for me to be the outlier that I know I am, be the difference maker, the playmaker that I came here to be and that I'm more than capable of being taken off from nearly 80 yards out to the crib. And with us having an atrocious first half so far, all the worry and anxiety I had turns into pure anger. I'm running with everything on my shoulders right now trying to make it happen. Put the ball in my hands by any means necessary. Let me go out here and make a play is what I told my coach. They even got me subbed in in the jet sweep formation. I'm making it happen any way, anyhow. Now running the route out of the backfield trying to be as available as possible for my dog Drake so we can make a big play and get down the field but he connects with my boy Nate up the field for the 50 yard bomb. Doing a little bit of everything. Catching the ball out of the backfield. Big runs. Pass protection. Drake is going to take this snap in the gun. Deliver a down to my boy JJ so we can take the lead going into the second half. Taking his hand off to the wide side of the field. Great block set up on side. I could have picked up the first, but instead hit the brakes, cut it back, and I maintain my balance through all the contact. And it's off to the races from 60 yards out. Tie ball game here is late in the fourth, and we're approaching the red zone. Feed me. No other option, no other way. The connection that I have with my quarterback, Drake May, we go off script at any given time, and it almost always works out in our favor. Turning a curl route into a streak, going up the middle of the field. Not only do I make the catch, but I break a tackle, and we survive Miami. We knew this game would be tough. Conference play on the road at the U, the toughest team we played so far 
far throughout the season. I put up yet another statistical masterpiece of a game, but to be honest, some of the better things I did that helped us win this game don't show up on the stat sheet. We got a snowy one on the road this week against Boston College. The last couple of games of the season, we're trying to finish out strong. I almost feel like we camouflage with these white jerseys and all this snow, but how about it? Running through everything and everybody. Grown man run getting into the end zone to put points on the board first. And crazy enough, with that touchdown, I break my own single season record that I set just last season this year with 25 touchdowns this season. Exploding out of the backfield is so beneficial. I sell the defense going hard one way, hit the brakes, go back the other, and a full speed, fluid motion, picking up almost 30 yards on the play. But then there's other times where running the ball to the wide side of the field is always the better option. I can just take the hand off and just fly, running through a defender's face, getting tackled from behind. These inside zone runs have been keen for us today, getting skinny in the hole, taking off, breaking the tackle, and it's off to the races. Just in the last two games, I've broken three school records, but here today, I make NCAA history of a legend, Barry Sanders. I break his single season rushing yards record. And for my name to overshadow and take place of an already college and NFL legend superstar at that, man, it just means the world to me. And breaking these records, all the notoriety and acknowledgement, it just continues to add fuel to the fire. It makes me want to turn my play up to the next level, if that's even possible. Because the level I'm playing at now is just otherworldly. I don't even think it's possible to take a step further. I mean, you can always improve, but how much better can you get? It's wet and extremely cold out here on this field, a recipe for disaster in terms of running the ball, but we have no choice. We're under a minute left trying to kill this clock. And with one last play, one last opportunity to go down and win this game and snap our 10-game winning streak, Boston College is going to launch this one in the coverage, and of course, we smack it down. We get the win over BC. So much is on the line today. We're ranked number one in the country, undefeated season on the line, and we have our annual North Carolina Duke rivalry game that is huge every season. And this is a big game. No matter what the records say, no matter what the numbers say on paper, this game is always going to be intense. But what it all comes down to, really, who has the better team, who has the better players? We're on the road, so we got a lot to prove, and we're hearing a lot of chatter before and during the games. And I'm out here to prove that we are the better team. We undefeated. I pull out the big run to put us in the red zone here late in the second quarter. Then I cap it off with a major catch in the end zone for a touchdown or going to the second half with a huge lead. We're doing everything we can to keep the ball out of Duke's hands. That offense can explode at any time. We got to be careful. They got a dynamic running back over there and a bunch of weapons on the offensive end. Doing our best to try to take advantage of this defense, catching the ball out of the backfield, breaking multiple tackles, fighting my way up the field, trying to get towards the 20. And with 15 seconds left on the clock, no timeouts left for Duke. We're going to take that final need to kill the clock and we're going to walk out of here victorious. And just like that, we continue to reign big brother over Duke for like the 30th straight year we win this game we continue to dominate we had a better team a better squad a better coaching today it all showed undefeated season achieved check now we have the acc championship against conference for fsu and on paper we should win this game by a mile and taking a look at the rankings we're currently ranked number one of all teams in the nation one of three teams that are still undefeated a lot has to fall in place to see who we're going to play in the national championship but first we got to focus on fsu as the number one team in the nation, how do you kick off the ACC championship against a highly touted 12-ranked Florida State team? You got to take off with a big run from your Heisman candidate running back all the way down for 40-plus yards. And then how do you cap off a huge play like that by getting into the end zone to put the first points on the board? We strike first. And with tremendous play for our defense, we land ourselves right back into the red zone. And once you hand the ball off to me within this distance, you know what time it is. It's a go-ahead touchdown. Before the game, my siblings, my mom, family, people, Period. Teammates, coaches, everybody ask one thing. Show up and show out. Breaking a tackle here on second and seven. And from there, speed is going to kill. Down the numbers to the crib for another touchdown. 21-0. The level of preparation, discipline, and execution we're putting on the display today doesn't compare to anything we've done all season. We came out here the ball one game away from our ultimate goal. It's only the first half, but I have to say, nobody, especially Florida State, is going to stop us from reaching that ultimate goal. And you better believe I'm putting it all on the line with an 18-point lead before going into the second half, taking this run wide to the outside side hurling a man trying to get out of bounds stop that clock i want to touch that end zone again we ran up the score here in the third quarter but so is florida state they put some points on the board letting us know this game is not out of reach especially with an entire quarter left to go in this game and as much as i love to go off script with some of these routes especially when i'm lined up in the slot i'm gonna stay true to this when i'm extended just a little bit picking up the first down and putting us within five and at that point we all know to just feed the beast hand me the ball offensive line is gonna do what they do the middle of the field is looking sweet walk in touchdown and at this point it's just a matter of running out the clock to think 
league already here in the fourth quarter with just over a minute left bro we're gonna go to the national championship game and compete for a title in just my sophomore season every big milestone every big game i have i gotta celebrate and show love to my offensive line but 27 carries 300 yards on the ground with seven total touchdowns six on the ground one through the air ballistic and we all sit back in these beautiful powder blue uniforms watching our coach horse that trophy we are kings of the acc Last year, I fell just short to a great running back, but this season, is it a surprise to anybody that I am the Heisman Trophy winner putting up otherworldly numbers? Somebody has to take their first loss this season. Number one, North Carolina versus number two, BYU. We're 13 and 0, they're 12 and 0. Off to the races, though, on the first play of the game. Let's get it. And there's so much at stake here. Not only do we have to win this national championship, defend our undefeated record, and some more, I got people back home that's put up everything, betting that we will win this game. Anybody who put any type of bread on me winning that Heisman Trophy, that was a gimme. They already knew that I was going to win. If I didn't get injured or anything crazy or tragic didn't happen, that was a go-ahead. But now trying to build on this momentum with a seven-point lead here early in the second quarter, this BYU team is strapped from both sides of the ball, top to bottom. We got to step up, ball, and execute. In this defense, they fly to the ball like no other. What looks like a bunch of open space, good blocks up front, I got to break through multiple tackles and fight to get my way to that first down. And as much as I like flaring out of the backfield, being a weapon for my offense, at the same time, I knew I should have been in pass pro. They stacked the box. They sent the guy flying straight through the gap I just ran out of. They pick up a fumble. And now down three points, fighting where there's somewhat of an uphill battle here late in the third quarter position. We probably haven't been in all season, something we're not used to. Down by a field goal late in the fourth quarter, second and 10. I'm trying to be a valuable option for my quarterback, but instead he throws his ball towards the flats. A huge, costly mistake with just over a minute and a half left in this game. 25 seconds left, down a field goal, national championship on the line. And what happens? A huge, terrible mistake on my part. I run the wrong route trying to go off script and I screw up the entire play while the whole team went back to the locker room hanging their heads in a complete disbelief that we just lost this game in that way I'm sitting on the sideline watching them hoist this national championship trophy high in the sky Breaking news coming out of Cedar Hills, Texas. Star running back for the University of North Carolina Heisman Trophy winning Tamar Sanders has just been arrested on murder charges. Police say that Sanders is responsible for the death of three individuals regarding the situation. More details coming soon, but this is a very sad day, not only for the state of Texas, North Carolina, and all of college football.